Hi, Dr. Taylor here again, and we're going to talk about how high homocysteine plays into low thyroid. So, what is homocysteine? Homocysteine is just a byproduct of protein metabolism, so everybody has homocysteine in their system. What matters is the level of homocysteine. So, what we like to see functionally is between 7 and 9. So think of homocysteine like cholesterol. You don't want it too high and you don't want it too low. Too high is bad and too low is bad. So you kind of want that sweet spot. So for homocysteine, that's between seven and nine. So if you get homocysteine that gets elevated, what happens is it blocks T3 hormone. So if you don't let out T3 hormone into the cell, uh, it's called thyroid resistance. So if you can't get T3 hormone into the cell to act on the cell like it's supposed to, turning on genes, turning off genes, that's where you get an issue. That's where you become thyroid resistant. So um, other things that can cause thyroid resistance are things like elevated estrogens, um, high omega-6 diet, um, cytokines, uh, high inflammation, all these things can cause thyroid resistance. So all bad. Um, another issue where you get with homocysteine are gene defects. So this is why we do genetic testing in our office to see specifically where the genes are having issue or not so that you can be supported properly. So what we're gonna do is we're really gonna fraction this down because we don't wanna make this too complicated because it is really complicated. Um, we're just going to work on a few genes to the cycle, even though there's many more that play on it. So we're just going to, like I say, just focus in on a couple key genes here. So this is a super truncated version of part of the methylation cycle. So you have MTHFR gene here, BHMT gene here, and CBS gene right through there, and homocysteine right through there in the cycle. So MTHFR is a pretty popular gene, probably one of the most studied genes nowadays. So if you know anything about genetics or you just Googled MTHFR, you'll see a plethora of issues that come with MTHFR defect. Thyroid's part of that. Um, so how that even plays into it, let's take it even a step back, is you need T4, so inactive thyroid hormone, for this whole system to even work. So you need T4 for proper methylation cycle. So if you have a thyroid issue already, you're affecting your methylation cycle, which is bad. So MTHFR gene, what it does is it basically methylates um, B vitamins. So when you methylate B vitamins, you need basically activating them to usable forms. So you need active B vitamins to break down homocysteine. So right off the bat, if there's an issue with MTHFR by itself, you're not going to be able to break down homocysteine like you're supposed to. Now MTHFR is feeding into the cycle through here, so you need a good MTHFR to get, have uh, good um, products to go into the cycle to actually work like it's supposed to. So there's other genes in through here through the cycle. So like here there's MTR, MTRR, uh, there's other ones through the cycle, but like I say, we're just going to focus in on the key genes here as far as homocysteine is related. So imagine the cycle goes this way. So we're pushing things this way through the cycle and you get homocysteine right here. So you have BHMT, which what it does is it recycles homocysteine back through the cycle um, so it can be reused. It's basically recycling it up through, here, up through here so you don't have to take it all the way around the whole cycle. So you can kind of get rid of homocysteine if it's getting high. So it's a good thing. So if you have a defect in BHMT, what it's going to do is it's not going to allow this you know, issue through. It's not going to allow the recycling of homocysteine. So then you're going to have high homocysteine, which like we talked about is bad. So... CBS gene. Now there's a CBS upregulation gene and a CBS downregulation gene. So we're going to talk about the downregulation gene. So what that does, CBS, it pulls homocysteine down into another part of the cycle to make glutathione, which is the main antioxidant in the body. So really a good thing that you need. So if you have a downregulation in the CBS gene, you're going to have pooling of homocysteine up through here. So this isn't pulling homocysteine like it's supposed to. So take a step further, say we found a CBS downregulation issue and a BHMT issue, what you're going to have is you're going to have really high kind of pooling of homocysteine in through this issue or through the cycle through here, which is going to cause high homocysteine levels, which obviously is going to cause issue with other things in the system. So what's nice about these things is, you know, that's why we do genetic variance reports in our office is we see these issues, we can properly support you to correct issues. We properly support the BHMT or the CBS downregulation so that they start pulling home cysteine like they're supposed to. So everything starts to work like they're supposed to. Same thing with MTHFR. We can support that so it starts to work like it's supposed to. So very, very important things as far as not only thyroid, but other chronic issues go. So we're talking about, let's, let's keep on the idea of B vitamins, like I say, are needed to metabolize homocysteine. So poor diet, you know, if you're not getting proper B vitamins in your system, you're not going to be able to metabolize homocysteine. Really, B vitamins are in a lot of foods, so that's usually not an issue. Typically, it's more of an absorption issue. So we're talking about hypochlorohydria, that fact. Uh, decreased acid in the stomach, not able to break down foods like you're supposed to so that they can actually be used like they're supposed to. 
or let's talk about poor liver function. That's one of the main places where homocysteine's um, broken down in the body is through the liver. So like say you had diabetes, so you have a lot of glycogen stores in the liver, decreased functionality. Say you had a fatty liver, obviously decreased functionality or you know, increased iron um, deposits in the, the liver from poor diet over years and years of eating uh, white fortified breads and cereals. Um, so there's lots of things that can affect not only the thyroid, but health in general. So like I said, that's why we do the genetic testing. It's so vital in figuring out what's specifically going on with somebody. Now, with the genetic testing, really the epigenetics dictate genetics. So here are genetics here. But if you can fix issues going on in the body, you can get proper diet and get proper supplementation, what might be needed to start with, these things will usually clear up. So typically when we get the genetics in, we get take care of all the epigenetics first and we see what's left over, what are the actual gene issues. Because if you just came in and we just did a variance report on you, these might not actually be issues. You might not get any actual good effect by supporting these genes if you don't have proper products going into the system to work like it's supposed to. So I say that all to basically get you to the, the end point that there's a lot of things going on in the system that can affect low thyroid. It doesn't just one thing. There's many, many different things that we need to look at because everybody's different to figure out exactly what's going on with you so we can support you properly to get you working like you're supposed to, to get you feeling well. So my name is Dr. Taylor and I hope that helps.